We believe Carolina basketball. This will be my favorite show that we've ever done. Favorite show. <laughs> I've, I've got my, my good luck, Carolina Cup. And uh, it's a Saturday. <laughs> it's early. And our boys stood on business today. Uh, man, initial reaction. So I, I, I wanted to come on right after the game. Initial reaction. I took a bunch of notes as if we were doing this. And, and, and again, uh, we don't have a ton of people that are watching this yet. And, and maybe some people watch and maybe they don't. Uh, I have a great time. Uh, I'm Graham Bunn. If this is your first time uh, tuning in or you're a Carolina fan or just a college basketball fan, former Division One point guard, got my brother, all around amazing guy, uh, UNC alum, basketball, very, very knowledgeable basketball guy, you know, had, had a, a very nice career in his own right. Uh, and I'll let him, you know, kind of get into that if he wants. But uh, yeah, we just kind of review Carolina basketball and talk about the team. Uh, this is something that I've always wanted to do, kind of barbershop talk. And uh, today is is our first like post-game reaction. And there's a lot of fan still left in me. So I'm in a great mood. How are you feeling today? I'm feeling good. Yeah, I was a tough cover on uh, court four and in, in Woolen, but you know, if I had to move to court one, you know, I, I would have some trouble. So that, that's, I've that's actually played in Woolen a few times. I like <laughs> Woolen had some good games in there. Woolen had some good games. The football right, players in reaction. particular. Yeah, the football players. Actually, I played down at state. Some of the football players at NC State would always come in there and play like ridiculous. But all right, back to the the UNC Clemson game. Uh, I'm gonna let you take it away first. First initial reaction. Now, again, the game just ended like five minutes ago. So, you know, take it for what it's worth. Uh, like I said, I, I I poured myself something nice in my in my Carolina cup, and I'm hanging out with my brother celebrating what I think is the biggest win of in the biggest game of the season. Yeah, yeah. I mean, my initial reaction is we held them to 55 points, you know, and uh, I don't, I haven't pulled up the box score. It felt like we out rebounded them, you know, and so to go on the road and beat you know, a team of that caliber, I think, you know, you've got to do those two things. And, um, you know, sort of two games in a row, we've won a bit of a rock fight on the road. And I think that speaks mm -hmm. volumes of, you know, Hubert and the staff and the team and where they are. And, you know, I think sometimes we get unfairly labeled as not being tough. Um, but, mm -hmm. you know, so far this season, I think this team has demonstrated a lot of toughness and it showed up today, you know, so that, you know, love winning a game like that. Yeah, I just got, and this is in real time, I uh, want to share with you because we were fortunate enough to have a former Clemson Tiger come on and, and kind of do the preview show for uh, the Clemson game. Mr. Shawan Robinson, uh, if he happens to watch this, which I hope he does, uh, we love you. You're a class act for coming on the show. And even more so, I just got a text. It said, we got stagnant down the stretch. It was great to catch up with you guys. Carmack Ryan made some big shots. Good win. So class act uh, in, in a loss for Mr. Shawan Robinson and uh, always good to catch up with somebody that can shed light on the game and kind of whatever rivalry it may be in whatever capacity uh, in Shawan Robinson. So very cool. Uh, I would lose that bet. If you were to ask me, like I haven't pulled up the, the stat sheet again. The game ended seven minutes ago. I would think that we got crushed on the boards, at least by 10. Um, there were several possessions where I felt like they got three, four looks at it. And we just couldn't couldn't get our hands wrapped around the rebound. And, you know, Clemson, I think, is going to still be a factor in the ACC championship, uh, you know, run, race for the regular season. I think they're a really good team. P.J. Hall didn't have the best game. And my two MVPs of this game, and it's not going to show up in the stat sheet, would be Baycott and Trimble. Baycott played his tail off on defense. I mean, I think you called it uh, that Baycott and, and Hall would kind of even themselves out. I'll take that effort from Baycott against P.J. Hall, who I think is an incredible player, not only in the ACC, but just in the country. I thought he was amazing. And Seth Trimble just does things on a consistent basis that make us a better team that no one will ever see unless they watch the game. Yeah, I think that was our number one key to the game. It was a bit obvious, but still the Baycott-P.J. Uh, Hall matchup was number one, and I think Baycott was the clear winner. In particular, I just thought his defensive effort was was fantastic. And, um, you know, we, we questioned whether or not P.J. Hall would be able to have his way out on the perimeter and whether he would hurt us from deep. Um, and uh, I don't think he made a three. Um, I mean, they so, made one all day, I think. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm looking at it right now. Yeah, just yeah. one made three. I think it was like one of 14. Yeah, and, and some of that maybe is a little bit lucky, but I also think that we contested. And uh, same as the pit game, right? We held them to a really yeah. low percentage. And, and so um, I think a lot of that was was effort. 
and paying attention to the details and staying close to the right people. Um, yeah. So yeah, I thought I thought Mondo played great. Um, probably his best game of the year. Yeah, given the the caliber of the guy he was going up against. Um, yeah. He seemed to take that challenge. It was great to see. Um, yeah, and so hey, you that, haven't that looked at the box the score. Before we move on, you haven't looked at the box score, right? I glanced. I glanced, okay. but it's just coming up. Yeah. All right. Could you don't look at it yet? I just want I want to see if just looking at it because I was incredibly surprised by uh, Mondo's stat line. If you were to guess his stat line, what would you have guessed it? I think he was like fifteen and fifteen or something like that. Yeah, he was fourteen and sixteen. Like okay, and and PJ Hall was ten and five, and I think he was uh, I want to say four of thirteen from the field. Uh, yeah, four of thirteen from the field, over oh, five from three. I mean. Again, that's not an absurd stat line for Armando Bacot. Obviously, he's he's known for that. But in on the road, going up against what is an All American caliber player, to give you fourteen and sixteen, and you know six of eleven, over fifty percent from the field, just uh, an incredible effort by him, uh, unbelievable. And again, like I said, if you didn't watch the game, you're looking at Seth Trimble's stat line. He has three points, which w- one was a massive three. Him and, and both. Uh, Paxton Wojcik, you know, I, I thought those two buckets were as big as any buckets we got all game. Uh, back to back. Seth Trimble, uh, back to back. And, and you know, they're at home. They're gaining momentum. The crowd wants to get into it really badly. Like, they're itching at it. And those two buckets just kept it at, like, three or kept it at four. It kept it at five. Um, and I just thought, you know, again, you look at Seth Trimble's stat line, 21 minutes, three points, four rebounds, you're you're not going to think that impact is – that the impact he had doesn't show up there, you know? Yeah. Well, our number two key going to the game was not letting Gerard get off from three, and I don't think he hit yeah. one. He did. And, the, uh, only, the only player that hit him uh, – hit a three was uh, one of their bigs. I, I, I can't remember. Um, maybe Wiggins, I think. Yeah. Yeah, Wiggins, Wiggins hit, hit a one, three. Yeah. He was 104. Uh, Gerard was 04 from three. And, again, I – it's got to be a mixture of closing out well or contesting these threes. I just don't see these teams shooting that poorly, you know, moving forward. So I'm glad we found a way to win. If they had shot that poorly and we lost, I'd be really concerned. Yeah, yeah, we're probably a little fortunate. But, again, the fact he only even took four, I think, you know, you're talking about Trimble and his stat, stat line, but I give a lot of credit because yeah. Trimble is on him for much of the game of mm-hmm. taking away his space and, and, and not getting distracted. And cause you know, that's, that's where it hurts you, right? You turn your head for a second and he, he's so savvy. Um, and so, yeah, you got to hand it to Trimble. I mean, that, that was huge, huge to just not let him get off and, and it forced other people to take, take hard shots. Yeah. You called it too. Again, uh, Gerard is also one of those guys where if he sees one go in, yeah, it can get, it can get out of hand quick. So, to stay locked in the entire time and not allow just the the hint of oh okay all right I, you know I've seen one go in let me get another one and get it going he starts making hard shots and, and when you when you get a guy that's as talented or as has as, as much experience as Gerard or anybody for that matter good defense is good to a certain point but once you get a guy who's in rhythm that's making hard shots good defense did, doesn't really matter then so you have to stay locked in until that point and I hope that point never comes. And I thought we did that today, which is which is great. Hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, you know, the the third key we we had the Ingram Shefflin uh matchup and who could impose their will. Uh mm-hmm. I think you probably have to hand that one to to Shefflin. <laughs> he had yeah. he had a good he game. He had a great game. Yeah. I, yeah. I thought he was the best player on both sides of the ball for the game. Like if it was a player of the game and and you took winning and losing out of it. He'd be player of the game. And I don't know his stat line, game too. but he's all over the place. He was amazing. And he was eating Ingram on the offensive boards or defensive boards in the beginning of the game. So much so that I think Hubert pulled him and put Withers in specifically because it was like, yo, you, you, you can't allow this guy to keep getting these offensive rebounds. Yeah. And Withers helped. I thought he did a better job on the boards than Ingram was doing. Um, and then Chase Hunter, right? Like he outscored RJ. And this was the first – first game I think where it felt like RJ had to force some shots because he was really struggling to get open and get get free looks mm-hmm. so you have yeah. to hand it to, to Chase Hunter for playing I think great defense and 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 also on the offensive end um played well so 
Um, if you'd have told me before the game that Chase Hunter was going to outscore RJ, uh, I said we would have had a tough time winning. So, um, yeah, interesting game that probably didn't play out how most people expected, right? Because, you know, the mm-hmm. two player of the year candidates with RJ and, and PJ, neither had their, their best game of the year. Um, yeah. Uh, not, not, not that either played badly, I guess, but, 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 oh, but yeah. neither like dominated the way they had been going into the game. Yeah. Uh, this is one of the things that now, you know, where, where the road of being a fan ends and, and I guess gets blurred into concerns. Like we just went a huge game and you're nitpicking at certain things like, Oh, I really hope we can do this better. Look, I'll take a road at Clemson, a road win at Clemson any day of the week. And, uh, I understand that you're nitpicking when you're when you start to talk about the deficiencies in the game. The one thing that I am really, really concerned about uh, when it comes down to massive games uh, on the road or neutral sites, tournament games of that matter is we outside of transition and we don't even do transition like we used to. I think Cadeau being in foul trouble consistently every game now is really hurting our uh, transition looks for RJ because he's off the ball and and it's hard in transition to find your man and match up and people are in different spots on the floor. We don't get RJ a lot of easy looks. Like you're right. He had to force some and he hit some tough ones. That that step back three, I knew was going in, you know, hard dribble, right. Pull back through the legs. One push back step three. That's his thing. And it's, it's a tough shot. He makes it consistently, but I just don't remember him getting any easy looks. And I I'm concerned and worried about that because if he gets his feet up under him 90% of the time, like, yeah, that's buck. That's a bucket. That's going in. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think that's part of the reason why, you know, your your, your concerns on Cormac are so valid. And um, and we need Ingram to kind of get back to some of what he was doing earlier um, in terms yeah. of shooting the ball. Um, yeah. And, and if those two guys are confident, um, that makes a big difference. It takes a lot of pressure off of RJ. If those guys are passing up open looks and, every, you know, RJ keeps getting the ball with four seconds left on the shot clock with a good defender on him. Yeah, I mean he can he can he can create and make some stuff, but you know we just need we need those guys to 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 take some pressure off if we're really going to you know go where we need to go. And and obviously Cormac I think had a a good first half for whatever reason he I don't know if it's the ankle um, or what, but but couldn't really get going again in the in the second half. But, but yeah, I think he shot a higher percentage um, this game than the 24 or 25 or something that he had coming in. So, um, good, good to see him knock a couple down. Yeah. I think hitting that first one early definitely did a lot for his confidence. You know, once you see the ball go in a little bit, you're like, oh, okay. And then you feel like there's some leeway, uh, especially if he's sub 30% and he, he's starting to miss He's like, man, I'm going the wrong direction. When you start making it, then you, you start worrying a little bit less about the percentages. I thought he did a great job. I am worried about his ankles. It always seems to be something, and I've never seen a player. And I'm not picking. I'm not making fun. I never want to see a player get hurt. But he turned his he turned both his ankles on a missed free throw that he shot. I've never seen anything like that in my life. Uh, I just you know, and at the time, I think it was the Nova game. I'm just I'm I'm befuddled. He didn't come down on anyone's feet. He misses his own free throw. And then sprains both his ankles. I'm like, what's happening? And then they didn't show the replay tonight. I don't know. Did he come down on someone's foot? Or did he just yeah, turn his ankle? I didn't see it. I, I didn't see it live. And I don't think they replayed it. So, yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, but he I came back in. which is, Yeah, so good to see. But I don't, I don't think he scored a point after that. So, you know, maybe, maybe he wasn't feeling too good. Um, yeah, I mean, he finished four of eight from the field. Two of six from... From three, which you know isn't great. That means he went one of five after making his first. Um, but again, he played well, and I will give him his credit. And I, you know, I want to make sure that I do a better job of pointing out the things that he does well. There's a lot of times where they ISO him and he's sitting down in that chair and making it really challenging. I mean, there was one possession, I think it was like a minute and 50 left, and it was still in doubt. They get a bucket, I think it goes from seven to five with a minute and a half and he just really sat down and played incredible defense because they you know they definitely isoed him and was like all right go at Carmack Ryan and uh, he came up with a big stop so I want to give him credit for that yeah and you know the bench um we we should we should give credit to the bench in general in this game I think I I think we said on the last show that their bench um averages Mm -hmm. 30 a game and ours averages 20 something like that Mm -hmm. And I, again, because we were doing this so quickly after it, I haven't had a chance to sort of compile this from the box score. But 
I mean, I'm pretty sure that Washington had at least four. Um, we had the two big back-to-back threes from from Seth and 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 Wojcik. Um, but Jalen at least scored on some layup or something, you know. So yeah. so, and I don't remember their bench doing a whole lot. Um, and, and so I, I feel like our bench at least held their own if 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 we didn't outscore them. But um, I think that's another key to the game. You know, is is the is you know when our our bench can hold the fort when they're in and, and contribute like they did. Um, I think that was big. Yeah, it looks like their bench was seven, and we are like 16. So 16, seven, you know. Yeah, so if you're going to the game a minus 10 and you end up a plus nine, I mean, I'll take that, right? Yeah. That's, that's a huge yeah. swing. Big time. Uh, talk to me what you think about Zayden High. I'm, I'm torn. So, you know, sometimes when you play, like this was, uh, and I remember a sticking point, we played UNC Charlotte at home my senior year, and they were not a great shooting team. So we zoned out of the tip. First two possessions, they knock in threes that hit nothing but net. And in my mind, initial reaction was, man, we got to get out of the zone. Like that was way too easy, too easy buckets like that. And I'll give Coach Fancher, uh, the guy that I played for, Carolina system too, by the way, Buzz Peterson, that that whole coaching tree filters down into my experience at App State. Calls timeout, sits everybody down, and says, "Man, that's the best thing could ever happen to us." And I'm, I'm confused. I'm like, I don't know about that. And he was like, "They're gonna now. They're gonna just live by the three. And they shot themselves out of it. We ended up rolling them pretty easily. And um, or maybe it was SMU. They had just beaten somebody big time, Wake Forest or somebody, uh, not Charlotte. And we rolled them by like 25 because they just kept throwing up bricks. And Zayden High, he makes that turnaround jump hook tonight, right when he gets in. And I'm happy for him. I want Zayden Hyde to, to be a four-year guy. I want him to stay with us. He, he seems like he's going to be a good player. But it, I, I could see the energy that was going through his body. He was excited and immediately fi- fouls 30 feet away, puts them to the line for a one-on-one. Then he fouls again the very next play on their end of the court on a loose ball, sends him to the line for a one-on-one. Then he doesn't box out on the, on the free throw. P.J. Hall gets that offensive rebound on our free throw line and puts it in for a bucket. So he costs us basically six points in 45 seconds. And I'm like, man, I don't know. Like, So talk to me about what you feel about Zayden High, his contribution. Uh, is he going to be a rotational guy throughout the year? You know, I, I think once we get halfway through ACC season, that rotation doesn't change much. Yeah, I mean, right now it's hard to see him getting a lot of minutes or uh, certainly more minutes than he got tonight. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, that being said, I I do think as much as we can, if we can continue to get him five, you know, ish plus minutes a game, you know, allow him to to develop. You know, I I think Roy did a good job, you know, I think – through, through most of his career of developing guys and getting them some spot minutes. And so, you know, their sophomore, junior years, they're getting a lot better. Um, I mean, I remember Luke May used to get minutes his freshman year. I'm like, what is he doing? Why is yeah. he out there? And, yeah. uh, and, and now <laughs> we were, we were, t- we had some, I would love to look back at our texts <laughs> about uh, Luke May, his freshman year. <laughs> yeah. I think I may have been wrong. Uh, I think he probably deserved those minutes. Uh, but anyway, so, you know, I think uh, I'm not saying, saying Zayden Hyde is going to turn to Luke May, although that'd be awesome. Sure. Uh, that would be awesome. Uh, but, uh, you know, so I think it's important developmentally to get those guys engaged and, and, and you never know when you're going to need them, um, mm-hmm. you know, but, but yeah, you'd like for some of those minutes to be a little higher quality. I mean, even like Wojcik, you know, I get concerned when he comes in, are we going to get quality minutes yeah. from him or not? Um, that three what a was ballsy huge. shot. What a ballsy yeah. shot. I mean, I think it came yeah. off like a foot fake and then it was contested. And I think he's got a he's got a lot of art. It's like a moon ball that he shoots, which is fine, which is great. I, I shot a line drive. I wish I didn't shoot a line drive, but I was looking at that ball, it was in the air forever, and I'm thinking in my mind, like, why? Why would you shoot that? And then I mean, it goes I, in, and you're like, Well, I just all right. I think he was a 40% three point shooter last year at Brown. So, I mean, like he, you know, he can shoot yeah, the ball. So I think once he settles in as the year goes but off a foot fake, like he's <laughs> just in the game. I don't think he'd shot the ball yet. Like it was, uh, it was a very challenging decision and choice in his mind. So kudos to him. Like he gets all the credit in the world. I, yeah, that was great. Yeah. But you I know, know this, that he missed though. <laughs> and, and I was glad that, you know, we, we, um, we were playing Mondo together with when playing two bigs a little bit more. We're going to have to continue to do that. They obviously play two bigs um, with yeah. Shefflin, so it's just a little bit easier for us to do. 
Um, yeah. But I think that's going to be an important lineup. Um, surprised we didn't go to the trap at all. I think this is the first game in a while, yeah. probably since the Florida State game, that that uh, Hubert hadn't thrown that at him, at least, you know, for a few possessions, you know, you know both have. So, you know, yeah. don't really, know why. Really but, but we were playing such good defense anyway, you know, maybe he yeah. just felt like he didn't need it. Really experienced backcourt also. Like sometimes you, you you're you're careful of who you choose to trap because they've seen everything under the sun. And you know, I just think and 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 obviously we won. So Hubert was on his game today and I love it. So I think maybe that would have played a factor into staying away from that. They get a couple of easy yeah. buckets at home, you know. It's it's like, oh, we'll play half court defense. And if they make a tough shot, great. But you just don't want to give up anything easy to start letting them develop any kind of momentum that wasn't necessarily earned. I mean, it's just so nice to see us close this game on a 7-0 run. I mean, how many close games did we have last year that we couldn't execute down the stretch and get a stop when All we of needed them. it? And I mean, All so, of them. Um, so to turn that around, you know, on, a, on the road against a very good team, I believe, um, pick up another quad one win, yeah, makes for a good start for a Saturday. Yeah, definitely. Uh, now we we continue. We stay on the road. We're going to be at NC State, which I feel like is a little bit of a trap game, and uh, I think that we'll definitely learn a lot about the mentality of this team when they roll into Raleigh, PNC Arena. Uh, State plays well at home. I've seen a few state games. They're not a, a team to take lightly. So you know, do you know anything about them? How are you feeling about it? Um, yeah, like what, what's your initial reaction? Now again. Game, let's, we're 21 minutes in. Game ended 25 minutes ago. Yeah, I, you, you hope we don't take them lightly or take our our foot off the gas. I mean, I, I guess it'd be human nature to get these first two road win, wins on the stretch of three and and maybe um, let up. But um, you know, it is a rivalry game. You know, it's it, it, and uh, yeah, I'm sure Hubert is going to have them have them focused. Um, yeah. So. But it's nice. It's nice having these two under our belt. You know, it, it feels like we're playing a little bit with house money right now on, on this third road game. Um, I think they're 73 net. Uh, so this would be a quad one win as it stands right now because it's you know, top 75 yeah. on the road. Um, so that would be huge. You know, I don't I don't know if they'll be able to hold that position. Hopefully they can. But uh, if we could go in there and get another road win, have it be another quad one. Um yeah, you know, it's just just huge momentum in in in, in conference right now. Um, so couldn't yeah. couldn't be happier with how the team is playing. Yeah, well, as it stands right now, NC State is taking on Virginia at home in Raleigh, and they're winning twenty three twenty one as as you and I are doing this show. So um, Virginia, some people will say it's a down year. They were ranked in the top twenty five not too long ago. Tony Bennett is one of the top five coaches in America, in my opinion. They're always really well coached. They've got talent on the ball. They've got an all first team preseason Beekman on their squad. And UVA has always been a factor in the ACC title run for like the last six years straight. So, you know, NC State's performing. Uh, and if they hold on for that one, they're going to be coming off some momentum too. I think it's, it'll do wonders for us and, you know, being the fan and being greedy here to go three and O in the ACC and, you know, or four, it'll be four and if we beat them. Right. Cause we Florida state, Florida state. Yeah. Uh, and in three of those be road games, like that's, you know, that's an incredible start to what, you know, we didn't have that luxury in the last three or four years. So I'm selfish. I'm hoping that, again, you and I talked about it last year is not too far from our memory, what happened to those guys and what they want to be a part of and, and the bigger, bigger things. But trap games happen and kids are kids. You know, I remember being in college, being like, oh, we're going to – we played Western Carolina who, you know, anyone that watches this, it's a Western Carolina fan. They were dog terrible. And, like, le- last in the in the conference, and we're coming off several big conference wins. I think we won at UTC, uh, who was 8-0 in the conference. We were, like, 7-0 and or something. And we go into Western and we drop one. Um, so, I, you know, trap games happen, and I just hope that we, we stay focused and we – I don't want to get greedy, but we put them away early and we we keep them put away, you know, because I would imagine we're going to be favored by at least seven to ten. Yeah, you know, it's it's interesting. I I feel like we have seen enough to to know who this team is, given how tested they are. Right. You go through, yeah. you know, the the out of conference schedule and the, um, the difficult games that we had. Um, and then now you, know, you get back-to-back road games in the ACC, you know, I feel like 
even though it's still relatively early in the season, you know, this, yeah. we've been tested enough that, that, that I feel like we know that this team's motivated. They're focused. We've got good leadership with, with Mondo and, and, and RJ. Um, they're playing much better defense now than they did, you know, early in the season. And, and so Hubert's yeah. kind of dialed in on that end of the season. The, the rebounding seems to be turned around in the last couple of games. So, you know, some of the early deficiencies, it's great to see when, you know, they, they focus on it and, it and then it translates to the court. It doesn't always happen, right? You know, sometimes you just you, you can't get it done. But so far, they, they, they seem to be improving in the right areas. So um, just very excited about this team so far. All right, last thing I'll ask you, heading into the remainder of the season at this moment in time, if you were to get a, a wish list or you're writing Santa Claus and you're putting something on there that you want for the team, uh, what would be on there? I'll give you an example. For me, I would love Harrison Ingram to find the – I don't want to say comfort. Hopefully he's comfortable out there. I don't know if he is or not. But I'd love to find – I'd love to see him find the success that he was having early on the offensive end, uh, a little bit more consistent throughout the game. I mean, he comes up with big buckets again tonight. One of the biggest buckets of the game was that that uh, ice oh he had up top against Shefflin. He takes two dribbles to the right, little flyby off the glass, puts us up seven, I think, with a minute 35. You know, just a massive, okay, that changes the dynamic of the game. He hit a couple, you know, I think he hit one really big three after he airballed one. But I would love to see him. I feel like early on he really had it clicking. I'd love for him to to find that again. That would be on my wish list if I'm being incredibly greedy right now. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, I could have said that one. I'll, I'll go. I'll go another direction. Um, I'll, I'll go with Cado. I think um, yeah. you know he was showing a really nice trajectory early in the year. You could see the confidence growing. He had that incredible game against Tennessee, um, and I think he's continued to play well, but. Uh, the the foul trouble, you know, it seems to have taken him out of his rhythm the last few games. Um, yeah. And so, you know, I'd love to see him have a game where he stays out of foul trouble. You know, he can get a little more flow going, a little more confidence going. Um, you know, I thought that, that uh, you know, he, I think he missed all of his jumpers. He had one, one, one layup going to the basket. I think he missed all of his jumpers in this guy. I actually like that he took a three. I think he needs to take a couple just to keep people I like honest. It, too. it looked um, good. But, it didn't go in, but it looked good. It looked comfortable. It, you know, it didn't look, it didn't look bad. I, I was liking that. I mean, I think he took two shots back to back because of the way they were playing him, it was like, man, you got to take one. You got, you got to keep them honest. So I, I, I have no problem with the shots he took. But I think we're really good on offense when he's attacking and able to get into the paint and find people and spray the ball to shooters. I mean, when we were yeah. scoring, you know, 100 against Tennessee, that's what was happening. And I think he makes us faster in the break and we get easier looks. So he does. I think that that for me would be the wish list is have him kind of he sort of plateaued a little bit, um, still playing yeah. well, but, you know, take that ne next step up. Um, I think that that would be a game changer for us. Yeah, I think we've talked about it, but he makes RJ so much better. You oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, it takes so much pressure find, off him. RJ can find his spots, look for, you know, okay, he draw kicks, you know, kind of hover and float, find the soft spot. And when he's in foul trouble, you know, we just don't get that dynamic from uh, any of our other guards for RJ. So I'm, I'm with you on that one. All right, looks yeah, like there's about 30 seconds. Go ahead. I said they put RJ back on the ball when Trimble comes in for him. Yeah, because yeah. I think they're more comfortable with RJ initiating the offense. And so that that puts sure. that extra burden on RJ and he's not free just to hunt shots. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, even in transition, like uh, even oh, when yeah. the outlet goes to to Trimble and he's bringing it up in transition, I just don't think – and and Cadeau's known for this. It's not a knock. It's just Cadeau is, is really good at finding people in transition. And I really hope that we get back to – some transition Carolina, like get it and go. Everybody filter out, find their spots, bake out front rim every play and, and, you know, get a couple easy buckets. But, you know, I love that. All right. We're going into 30 seconds left in the NC state, Virginia game. NC state is up six. So, you know, 30 seconds left. Looks like NC state's going to handle business in the first half. Uh, so I think it'll be a big game for us, uh, a little bit bigger than I would have thought. I would have definitely lost that bet on that UVA game. I'm going to go try to catch the second half. But uh, until then, go Heels, baby. What a big win. What a way to start the weekend, you know? Huge win. A lot of fun. Love. Yeah.
All right. Well, you're the man. Uh, hang hang out soon. Hang out for a second. I'm going to need you to stay. But, yeah, go Heels. Go Heels.